Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad that you were here. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, thank you so much for your continued support. Today, we are here to do the end of the year book tag. So just like the mid-year book freakout tag is a staple tag here on booktube, so is the end of the year book tag. And so I'm excited to go ahead and be doing it again today. I believe the original tag was created by Ariel Bassett. I will be sure to link her channel down below. There are only a handful of questions here. It's a pretty short tag. We're just going to go ahead and jump right in. I have done absolutely no prep for this tag, even though I've done it before. I don't remember like any of the questions. So we're going to see how this will go. Question number one, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? And the short answer to that is no. Typically, if I pick up a book and I don't finish it, I'm not going to be finishing it. I don't necessarily believe in soft DNFing things. That's just because I know that if I soft DNF something, there's already something negative attached to that story. Even if it's just that I wasn't in the mood to read it at the time I picked it up, most likely I'm always going to associate that book with something negative. And so I don't necessarily know if I'm ever going to go back to it. A good example is From Below by Darcy Coates, which I DNF'd in October. And for all intents and purposes, that book should have been perfect for me because of the content matter. But I picked it up and I just wasn't connecting to it at all. I didn't really care about the characters. Darcy Coates's books are very, very plot driven and I'm a character driven reader. And so even though theoretically I should have loved the content of the story, I just wasn't. And it didn't help that I was also feeling kind of slumpy when I went into that book and having a book that I wasn't connecting to was not helping me get out of the slump. And so while I could feasibly go back and read From Below again, I just don't think that I'm going to because there's too much negativity surrounding my experience with that story, if that makes sense. So the short answer to that question is no. If I have started a book this year that I have not finished, I'm not likely to finish it. So I really don't have anything that I need to continue with by the end of the year. Question number two, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? I don't have a specific autumnal book, but I do consider like thriller, suspense books, mysteries, all of that good stuff be the perfect type of book to read this time of year. And so I typically consider those my transition period. So in like October, November-ish, I'm very much in the mood for more spooky, horror, thriller, suspense, all of those types of genres. And that's what I've been reading heavily for the month of October. So I don't necessarily have an autumnal book, but I have an autumnal genre, if that makes sense. Question Question number three, is there a new release that you were still waiting for? And again, the short answer to that is no. Y'all know that I don't necessarily anticipate new releases because I don't tend to read them as they come out. The only exception to that really is book of the month books because I try to read those as they come in because I don't want them sitting on my shelves. So if a new release is not part of book of the month, chances are it's going to be a while before I get to it. Unless of course it's sent to me. I try to read all books that are sent to me as they come in so that they are not sitting on my shelves. And so if it's not sent to me, I'm likely not going to get to it anytime soon because I always prioritize backlist books. And because of that, it doesn't make any sense to anticipate a new release that I know that I'm not going to get to. There are definitely a lot of cool releases coming out in November and December that I'm very interested in, and they have certainly been added to my TBR, but they're nothing that I'm going to get to by the end of the year. So it doesn't matter if they come out this year or not, I'm not going to be getting to them. Question number four, what are three books that you want to read by the end of the year? So honestly, the easiest answer to this question are all of the book of the month books that I have on hold with my library currently. I'm waiting on a ton of book of the month audiobooks to come in from the past couple of months that I have not been able to read yet. And like I just said, I try to read those as they come in, but I cannot listen to them until they come in from my library. So two that I'm specifically very interested in reading by the end of the year, The Unmaking of June Barrow by Adrian Young. I read Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young earlier this year, and I really enjoyed it. I love the atmospheric magical vibes, and I know that this one is going to be the same. This one is on hold and I'm waiting for it. Same with Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time earlier this year, and I absolutely loved it. I loved what Jillian McAllister did with the concept of time travel in order to solve a crime before it happens. So I absolutely want to read more from her. I also am really digging the idea of the story from what I understand. It follows a missing girl and there's a detective assigned to the case, but she is being blackmailed and she is told that you cannot find this missing girl or your worst nightmare is going to come true. And so I'm interested in how she's going to toe the line and do her job while also trying to thwart the blackmailer. It sounds fantastic. And I've been anxiously awaiting this one from my library. And a non-book of the month book that I want to get to, not only because it was one that was sent to me, but also because it will satisfy one of the very few remaining challenge prompts that I have left to satisfy some of the yearly challenges that I'm doing. That is The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. I absolutely love Kate Quinn. She is quickly becoming one of my favorite historical fiction authors. I read The Rose Code a couple of months ago and I absolutely loved it. It was a 4.5 stars and so I definitely want to get to this one. This one says, Rye and bookish history student Mila Pavlichenko organizes her life around her library job and her young son, but Hitler's invasion of Russia sends her on a different path. Given a rifle and sent to join the fight, Mila must transform herself from studious girl to deadly sniper, a lethal hunter of Nazis 
known as Lady Death. When news of her 300th kill makes her a national heroine, Mila is torn from the battlefields of Eastern Front and sent to America on a goodwill tour. Still reeling from war wounds and devastated by loss, Mila finds herself isolated and lonely in the glittering world of Washington, D.C. until an unexpected friendship with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and an even more unexpected connection with a silent fellow sniper offer the possibility of happiness. But when an old enemy from Mila's past joined forces with a deadly new foe lurking in the shadows, Lady Death finds herself battling her own demons and enemy bullets in the deadliest duel of her life. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Kate Quinn's books typically follow very strong female heroines in World War II and I absolutely love them. So this is definitely a priority as well as any of the other books that have been sent to me in some capacity since the start of the year that I have not read. I'm not talking about books that I've purchased for myself that I haven't read, but books that have been actively sent to me. So this is certainly a high priority for the end of the year. Question number five, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? And I honestly don't really think so. Y'all know that I'm a very, very stingy person with my five-star reads. I've only given out a handful of five-star reads this year. It is unlikely that anything I have on my radar for the end of the year would be a five-star read. I definitely have some chunky fantasies that I would have liked to get to that could definitely have been a five-star read, like A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass, but I definitely will not be getting to those by the end of this year. It's just not going to happen. I don't have enough time, energy, patience, or brain power. So I think a lot of the books that I have on my radar for the end of the year are going to be strong books, and I'm really, really going to enjoy them, but I don't think that they are going to be anything that are worthy of a five-star. I certainly hope so. I always go into a book hoping that it's going to be a new favorite, but that very rarely is the case. So I think my favorites from this year are kind of already cemented, but we can see. We can hold out hope. And question number six is, have you already started making reading plans for 2024? Yes and no. I think a lot of my reading plans for 2024 are going to be very similar to the reading plans that I had for 2023, so I'm not actively working very hard at making reading plans. I will be making a complete goal revisit and new goal video for Bookmas that is coming up, and I definitely have a few things that I want to accomplish in my reading. I don't necessarily have a very detailed organizational plan for 2024, but I have a general idea of what I would like to do, and I definitely have already started planning content for 2024, and I certainly would like to bring back my Buffy the Vampire Slayer readathon, but I'm trying to make big changes to it, and I don't know if I'm going to have the time or the energy to make all of those changes in time to bring it back, but that would be like the biggest reading plan that I have in 2024 would be to bring back my Slayer Fest readathon. So we're going to see how that works out. Like I said, I'm trying to make big changes to it, and I just don't know if it's going to happen. I'm trying to make it a lot more dynamic and a lot more creative, and as a non-creative person, it's very, very difficult for me to do it. So I'm trying, but all of these other things are kind of taking precedent and taking up space in my brain. But have I started making reading plans for 2024? Yes and no. Clear as mud, right? All right, everybody, that is it. That is the end of the year book tag. Short, sweet, and to the point, but I hope that you enjoyed. Please comment down below and let me know some of the books that you hope to read by the end of this year, or if there are any books that you have started and have not yet finished, I would love to know. Or if you have made it to the end of this video, but you are not feeling chatty, I want to let me know that you are here. Go ahead and leave me a diamond emoji if there is one, or some kind of jewel emoji in honor of the Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. As always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I am to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I can do, and I would sure love to connect with you in one of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the books that we've discussed in this video today. Until next time, guys. Bye.